What's up, Bleach fans? It's time to talk about the latest episode. Episode 31, Against the Judgment for Bleach. Thousand Year Blood War Arc. And not only, we got two volumes here today, people. Yes, we do. Because not only do we finally finish off, and now I understand why. Now I fully get it. Kubo and the anime writing staff, they're doing it correctly. They're doing everything. Like, they're just taking what we know and saying you know what we can do let's not remove anything let's just make it better if it's a seven let's push it to an eight if it's a ten let's leave it alone and if it's a five let's try to rework it to make it at at least a seven you know what i mean so what do we have here in this episode well we clear up all of the mist quote unquote miss scenes from volume 68 everything that was building the whole we have the soul spiritual pressure regeneration machine whatever it was called by Mayuri scrap that shit let's do a more inspirational level of doing this let's not open the gate this early let's wait until this volume when it matters let's get Basby let's get the Quincy's together let's do the eyes and stuff let's get everything working uh, Kempachi showing up to the room and stuff at the time it made sense for the manga I'm not blaming Kubo here I'm not blaming the writing at the time he had these ideas and he was trying to uh, share the love as it were but when you can sit back from a project that you wrote, a project you made, you know, sometimes I'm certain that even the greatest written stories of all time, Lord of the Rings, perfect example, Tolkien, best writer of all time, I'm sure later in life, because I know he made changes to his own lore, that's a fact. We know this from, from his son Christopher Tolkien. And the idea that he would sit back and say, nope, don't need to fix a thing wouldn't move a scene, wouldn't change a dialogue, wouldn't do a thing. That's out to lunch. That's asinine. You would absolutely sit back and say, okay, I know why I did it at the time, but I can rework this and make it better. And that is what is taking place here in this episode. Because the episode, outside of one, well, sort of one and a half small scenes, just panel for panel panel for panel covering the last of well well the last of 68 and then starting us off with the beginning section or the beginning couple of chapters of 69 here so what I love about this is that we don't lose anything and we only gain because we take all this information and we move the Kempachi with the now scene. We move uh, the Visards showing up scene. We eliminate completely the Maori scene, like I talked about with this, like let's make spiritual pressure and stuff. Because you got to remember, they were building the gate before Uke Take even showed up in the manga. So instead of having multiple plot lines to pay attention to, and this won't work, and that won't work, and this whole oh well we had this the whole time. We don't need Uke Take spiritual pressure. We don't need this. The idea of, okay, Aizen shows up when it's at its worst. He eliminates all these, uh, you know, uh, Soul King-esque uh, eyeballs and stuff like that, as they're affectionately called, or not affectionately called. Um, that all stays the same. The, uh, the remaining Quincy's, you know, show up sort of idea, and they kill one of their own. Basby kills one of their own and says, listen, we want to get to the Soul Palace too. Let's go. Right, and they all start working together and stuff. And this all happens in the manga, but the idea of okay, we didn't get the Kempachi scene, we didn't get the soy phone scene, we didn't get the visor scene, all this stuff building up to this moment of collectiveness plus the additional scene, which I love, the additional scene here of just our first division, well, our eighth captain, but our first now first division captain, shouldn't we just opening a line and saying, everyone, please come help. Court, like, this is our battle. This is what the court guard squads are here to do. So bring everybody. 
we need all your energy all the way down. It's a spirit bomb. It's a Genki Dama. It's that idea rather than just we need a couple of super powered individuals to make this happen. No, we need everyone from the Soul Society all the way down and we get cameos. That's what I love. We get cameos from the Soul Society arc. Uh, Mochi, what, what is that what is his name? Mochi, the one who um, Orihime, of course, healed. It was in the battle between uh, Kurotsuchi and Uryu and stuff like that. And he traveled along with them as a captive or their guide sort of idea. You know, he was there with Kenpachi and Yachiru and stuff like that. Uh, from the Soul Society arc, we also got, I believe, Afro Man, a Yamada son or whatever, the guy who was guarding uh, Karaku Town, uh, you know, at the time, you know. Uh, Karakuro Town was guarded by a, and uh, by, obviously, was assigned to another Soul Reaper, apparently, 10th seat, uh, if, if this is the same character. But either way, and we get the two new characters who opened up Thousand Year Blood War arc, well, they were semi sort of new. They, they weren't new. They were in the manga. But anyways, point is, is that we're getting the cameos from all the small characters. The Soul Reapers that aren't lieutenants, aren't captains. But we're seeing them as well. They're all standing here. They're still alive. They're beaten. They're bloody. But they're like, yes, we will give all this energy. And it's a moving speech, an original moving speech by Shunsui talking about this. Kisuke does his little thing that's the same in, in the manga, but done to a different position. And it makes it far better. It makes it a stronger scene overall because it's like, yes, we're going to break into Soul Palace. We're going to do this. And the fact that all this happens and Sosuke wakes up, uh, Aizen wakes up, and uh, Shunsui and him have their little moment after the fact sort of idea like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, that conversation happens in the manga, but it's placement plus Aizen's afterthoughts, his monologue, because, I mean, he's the master of monologues, as we know. But he talks about this. He talks about Quincy's and Soul Reapers working together. Mm, you know? And he's a little melancholy about it, but y you know what I mean? Like, it just works so... M just... It just works. I could go on and on, but I, I just think that this works. Once again, it follows... The manga volume is basically page for page. It's just moving the scenes all around and making, by removing one small detail and connecting the two volumes into one to make a complete story, it just, it, it vibed better. It vibed in every way. The pacing was better. Everything. And once again, line for line, it's panel for panel. But it, it just works. It flowed far better because I kept saying, I kept saying in the last couple episodes, I'm like, we're still not done with volume 68 because we skipped as far in as like the first couple of pages. Let me, let me just double check. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like as early, as early as the first half a dozen pages, we, we're skipping scenes, but not, we didn't skip them. We just moved them to a better pacing, to a better plot point, to a better structural story. And it, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I love everything, the dedication and everything going into this. Um, and then we finish off, of course, with uh, the fact that we got that entire filler fight with Uryu, which was fantastic and stuff like that. And uh, Orihime, uh, we get a nice little romantic moment with them, which is fine. Um, they uh, obviously redo that scene, but nothing major changes. Just Ichigo is healed, so is y Yoroichi, and then Grimjow, the man, the myth, the legend, shows up, which we get a great shot of Shunsui knowing that he's going to show up. Uh, and then we get Grimjow showing up at the end of the episode, and it's like, fuck yeah, let's go, baby! Like, I'm, I'm ready for this. Let's go. So, in the same way that Mike Tyson is ready to one punch and just finish Saitama style, uh, what's going down? Uh, in the same sense, I'm like, yes, Grimjow showing up. One of the best Espada is a fan favorite character. Uh, out of all the Espada, is he my favorite? Questions for later, but he's definitely up there. He's one, definitely one of the best uh 
characters introduced, but one of the best are Ronkar, at the very least, out of that entire saga, the Waco Mundo, Fake Karakura, you know, the Ronkar arc, all that. Definitely one of the most uh, fun characters, and obviously fan favorite, and seeing him here again is just, mwah, it's, it's fantastic. Now, that's basically where the episode ends. We get the after scene, of course, of the fact that, and this is talked about by Aizen previously, and it's been theorized and talked about by me many times, that obviously taking in the Soul King isn't so easy, even for the King of the Quincy's. Like, it's going to take some time to manifest, to control, to take all that power in. Boom. And as I made a comparison to the Doctor Doom uh, in the Secret Wars episodes of the Spider-Man cartoon from the 90s, um, that is, it's the same sort of vein, it's the same idea, it's like assimilating and climatizing yourself to these powers isn't, doesn't happen in a boom, you know what I mean? So, that's all fine and dandy, and the fact of the matter is, is that they're all sort of freaked out by this, understand, other than Hashwalt, they're sort of freaked out by this, understandably so. And now he's like, I have fully assimilated. Let's go, my children. We're going to win. You know, and stuff like that. And that's that's where the ending scene, you know, or the, the post-credits, the after uh, scene ends. I'm sure we're going to get the same scene done from the same angle or a different angle as, as it is um, in episode 32. But, uh, yeah, this episode was absolutely... Uh, Basically, other than, as I said, the culmination of all the scenes that were being skipped, moving them all into one thing. We do not see Yodoichi's brother in this regard. Uh, he never shows up, as far as I know. Uh, am I mistaking that? I don't think I am. I don't remember Yodoichi's brother showing up at any point in the anime here yet, so I think we just sort of whomp that scene. Uh, forgot about it completely. Uh, but maybe that happened earlier? I I'm not 100% there. But I was just going through the manga volume, so I was like, I don't remember this actually happening. But, you know, maybe I just forgot about it. Um, anyways, the episode, as I said, other than the culmination and just bringing all those scenes together and making it better paced, following a better plot line at the time, you know, rather than having it staggered and pieced, so far apart between chapters and episodes now we have a more concrete story that flows far better and once again the return was obviously has to be the thumbnail there were some beautiful shots of other characters but the return of chair sama i mean do i need to say any words or just end the review right there those two words invoke so much in the Bleach community, and for good fucking reason. So I will actually end that out. I don't think I need to say anything about the chair or the man, the myth, the legend, sitting in the chair other than to just say, chair summer. That's it. That's the, you know. There, there's nothing I can say that's, that's, that everyone doesn't already feel and know and everything else in between. So, like, comment, and subscribe, everybody. It was great to see Chair Sama finally animated. Um, plus, catching up fully from Volume 68 into Volume 69 in one quick episode is fantastic. Because now we're back on the pacing, you know, like... the. Like, it's great that we finished off all of this stuff because we were we were jumping ahead. We were, you know, sort of falling behind in one sense with all the uh, extra stuff, which is fantastic. I'm glad how much extra they've added. And even in this episode, they added a whole new scene. But the fact is, is that now we're back on track. We're back on pacing. And now we have well deep past 68 into 69. I'm looking forward to how quickly they get through 69 because I have a feeling that the uh, extra fluff, that the filler, is not about to end here. And I'm, I'm absolutely here for it. You know what I mean? I think that every added scene, every extended scene, every moving of scenes to different episodes at a different time, rather than the ones that we saw them in the manga, nothing has been wrong yet. 
Not a single thing has fallen flat. Nothing has failed. There has been only, only improvements. And as Bleach is one of my favorite animes and mangas of all time, and has been for many years, you love to see it. You just absolutely love to see it. So that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. We're, we're officially caught up. Only a few days late with this review coming out. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping to get the next review out uh, basically the day of or the day after. So, finally caught up. We're trying to get our schedule back on track. So, this is what it is. As I already said, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be back here for episode 32 of Bleach. Don't forget those two words. Chair, Sama, and I'll add two more. Was here. There we go. Was, was here in this episode. So... Have a good one, everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. See you back here next time. Sayonara.